Good evening. We had a whole choir there just now. So good evening and welcome again. We are here for the Christ for the crisis. All right. So um, I don't get a chance to do this too often. So I'm going to ask you to stand and I'm going to ask you to speak to at least two people. Welcome them, greet them and say to them that, yes, we need Christ for this crisis. All right. So greet two people. You, you might not get a chance to get up again, so just greet two people. doesn't matter which two or three people, and tell them, we need Christ for this crisis, all right? You get a chance to get up. So this is a time to greet. Hopefully you've had a good day. So we're greeting everybody. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. You can be seated. So we are here in this... I guess crisis, but Christ for the crisis. And fortunately, we have Pastor Jerome Gordon who's going to give us a word, a word this evening. All right. So I, I asked you to to sit, but I should have just got you to stand. We're going to stand for our opening prayer. All right. 
So if you can bow your heads with me. Once again, Lord, we know we need you every day, every hour. There is a crisis going everywhere, all around this world. Help us to continue to invite. Help us to live right. Help us to do the proper things so that we can have people seeing Christ in us. So we're asking for your guidance. Help those that are on their way. Bless those that are here. We want to thank you again, Lord. Amen. Right. Happy Sabbath, church. No, it's not Sabbath, sorry. <laughs> I'm so used to that. It's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everyone. <laughs> all right. Hope we're all having a great week so far. Um, so we're going to be doing our song service a cappella. I hope that's okay. And we're just going to do some hymns. So the first hymn is going to be Hymn 500, Take Time to Be Holy. Hymn 500, Take Time to Be Holy. So the tune will be... I take time to be holy. Okay, ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy, let him be thy guide, and run not before him. In joy or in sorrow, still follow the Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love. Thou soon shalt be fitted for service of love. Amen, amen. So our next hymn is going to be 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. <clears throat> All right, the tune will be Blessed assurance, all right, here we go. <laughs> One, two, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God. Spirit, what? 
washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. And for our last hymn, we'll just do hymn 530, It Is Well, and we'll just do the first and last stanza. Oh 
sing our theme song, Learning to Be. can do for the opening prayer. <laughs> Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. We clothe us in our rightful minds and help us, Lord, that as we bow before you this night, as we are in preparation for another meeting, another evangelistic meeting, Lord, 
We pray that you, your Holy Spirit will shower down and fill this place. That he would inhabit every soul. Not just in the sanctuary, but Lord, with all of those who are watching online, we pray that he, the Holy Spirit will take control of them there, Father. We pray that you would fill us with your presence. And as we've been studying this week about truth, Lord, we pray that you will sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And as you tell us once again, Lord, in Proverbs 23, verse 23, Lord, that your truth, as they fill us, Lord, we know, Lord, we would not be able to be deceived by the evil one, Lord, because we know the, the enemy is strong. But we know, Lord, that when the Holy Spirit fills us, we would be like this, the disciples on the day of Pentecost. That not even threats can stop us. So Lord we pray that you would. Fill this place. With your Holy Spirit. We pray that you would take charge of the speaker. And you would send your angels who. Excel in strength. To protect him. Physically. Mentally and spiritually. And you would fill him with your words. That Lord we would not be hearing the speaker but we would be hearing Jesus speaking to us Lord we pray that he would draw us closer to you because Lord we know that when you are close by temptation loses its power and you said Lord that if you be lifted up you will draw all men unto you Lord so we pray Lord that you would Lift up every soul this night and draw them closer to you so that they would not fall prey to the evil one as Eve did in the Garden of Eden. So Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us, you would strengthen this speaker, that you would open our hearts, that as he speak to us this night, Lord, the Holy Spirit would Give your, word, your words the power that can penetrate our souls and draw us close to the you. And we know, Lord, that at the end of the day, souls will be saved for your kingdom. We pray that you would be with those who are on their way, that you would bring them here safely. And Lord, we pray that you would be with us every step of the way. And we pray that this night would be a success. And Jesus would be lifted up. These are not the mercies we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. A very pleasant evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. We are together again just praising the Lord. I believe we are together again in one accord. Therefore, something good is about to happen. Something good is in store because we are together again just praising the Lord. And we have the blessed assurance when God's people come together to lift the name of Jesus his presence is with us to bless us and to do us good. So welcome and stay welcome. Now what time it is? What time it is? All right, so let me first identify um, those who have taken a visitor. Remember, there are two songs we will not sing. I come to the garden alone, nothing in my hands I bring. 
We are bringing our friends, our spouses, and neighbors, and enemies. We are bringing everybody. Amen. All right. So let me see the hands of those of our visitors here. You have invited your friend. Amen. That is wonderful, uh, Sister Campbell. So quickly, ushers, I would like to give Sister Campbell, I'm going to give you an opportunity to choose. Do you need this book, Total Member Involvement? All you need. Now, this is for your visitor. Um, studying together. This is a powerful book by Mark Finley. She would like that one. Or you, do you need a Bible? You prefer Bible? Okay, that's good. All right, so one for Sister Campbell and one for her friend. Anyone else? Okay, on my right. Okay, you're waving like Her Majesty. Okay, Sister um, Angeline. All right, so how many visitors you have? Are you calling my little friend off? No, he's full. He's, so that is four. Amen? Amen? Amen. So what should I give you this evening? A Bible? You have a Bible already? I'm going to send you total member involvement. Would you like this one? Okay, and give um, that beautiful lady the Bible. All right, and um, for the other visitors, your husband is a part of the four? Okay. She's counting her husband. That is good. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. So um, quickly, um, other visitors here. Yes, you have visitor. You have three. One, two. Okay, awesome. So for the three visitors... Amen. We're happy, delighted to have you. The Lord is doing something marvelous in this place. And we're going to give you a, a Bible. You have a Bible already, right? Okay. But you can give the Bible to one of your visitors. And we have some great controversies here. Um, wonderful. Any other visitors? Quickly. Your visitor. Or you are here. This I'm looking at my friend on my right. She's looking at me. Hi, sister. I'm Walcott. Amen. I need to send something for you. Do you have steps of Christ? No? Okay. All right. Wonderful. That is sister Elaine, right? Okay. Wonderful lady. Wonderful lady. All right. Anyone else? That's it for this evening. Now, this coming Sabbath, you cannot afford to miss being here. Cannot afford to miss the service this coming Sabbath. You may ask why. Well, this coming Sabbath will be V-Day. And V-Day will be Victory Day. And Victory Day will be Baptism. So we're going to have a baptism here. But the truth is, I don't want us to just have a baptism. I want us to have a big baptism. And um, I won't say much, but, you know, we went out today and... It's always a good feeling when somebody say, I want to be baptized. And so, a certain person, I won't call in the name, I won't look in a certain direction, let you know who I'm talking. But I, you know, I felt so good. Because when I, when I listen to the news, people are dying left, right, and center. People are dying without a um, Christless grave. And whenever someone decides to be baptized, that should be good news. Amen. So that makes my day. That makes my day that there will be um, another person to be baptized. So those of you not yet baptized, please join us. Um, before I take my seat, remember, I have the family Bible. And if you need a family Bible, all you need to do is to bring 10 persons. Or the person who brings the most visitors for the week will get the Bible. So Sister Angelina, you have four, right? Even though it's a three and a half. My little friend is is a fool. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, if you bring the same four tomorrow, the same four, that will be eight. And if you bring them Friday night, because Thursday night will be rest night, right? That will be 12. Amen. And if you bring them Sabbath, the same four, that will be what? 16. You, you, you're working for the Bible? 
You're coming for it Friday night? Okay, good, good. And at the end of the, the week, we'll give a special gift. And this is a masterpiece. It has the family tree. So when you get married, or if you plan to get married, there's a section. You can put the appearance name, um, the children, special events like anniversary, so on and so forth. Remember, it has the Old Testament and the New Testament and the intertestament that is between the Old and the New. It has 165 pictures, so it is pictorial. Amen. And it has Daniel and Revelation. It has index and concordance. And it is for 120 Canadian dollars. Are you getting it free? Well, just bring 10 persons. And uh, we're going to have a book um, resource center outside just in case you need books. And um, before I take my seat, I know my time is gone. But I have to mention this one. There will be a wedding this coming Sabbath afternoon. Did I say a wedding? When last year I've been to one. You haven't received any invitation. So, so, so you know what? I'm inviting all of you to be here. There will be a real bride right here and a real groom. And they're going to kiss after they, we say for better or for worse. Yes, they're going to kiss. A real bride. But you know what? I said to myself, I think those of us who have been married... I'm going to ask you to bring your spouse. Uh, I have my tuxedo ready. Amen. I think my wife will be up to the task. I hope she doesn't get cold feet. Um, I want to marry her again. So all of you who are married, please bring your spouse. Somebody called me yesterday and said, Pastor, are we going to have a wedding? I said, yes. We're going to have a wedding. I said, well, I'll be here. Seems like she's getting ready. I said, Pastor, I'm bringing five bottles of wine. <laughs> alcoholic, uh, let me call it alcoholic wine. So, um, yes, we're going to have a big time. Awesome time. So, those of you who are not yet married, you need to be here. Because we want you to get the inspiration of the moment. So, those who are not married, please come right. Just stay close to the couples because these Say four benches. I want us to marry people. Elder, your wife should, should be beside you. And those who are not yet married, I want them to get the vibes, the inspiration. So at the end of it, they'll start thinking about getting married. I have to stop here because my time is. And there will be lunch this coming Sabbath. So listen, after service, we just stay. We have lunch and then we just get ready for the, the wedding ceremony. It's going to be a real wedding. Amen? Thank you very much. God bless you and we'll do it again tomorrow evening. Okay, good evening. So, as you are aware, I am doing the post-assessment or <clears throat> the quiz. So, this, I guess I'll be doing the answer first to the one that we did um, on Sunday. So, let's go through it together. And um, if you do know the answer, um, I do have an analysis that I'll go through with you after. But question one... Um, the answer was, um, the question was, Pastor Gordon effectively states um, the title Christ for the crisis is used to signify, A, the belief that worldly problems have no solution, B, the idea that Jesus Christ's teachings are paramount during difficult times, C, the belief that Christ caused worldly dilemmas, or D, the idea that Christianity in itself is in crisis. That one seems to have caused a little bit of challenge based on Sister Sapira. We're working together. Um, I'll do the question, she does the grading. So she mentioned to me that number one was quite challenging. So what is the correct answer? Where's Richard? 
Okay, so let's go. The correct answer, according to me, is B. <laughs> okay, number two. Um, we talked about the phrase, righteous exalts a nation, implies every member of a nation needs to be righteous to raise its status, and success of a nation is measured by its wealth. Correct, it's false. Um, number three, we are completely free to choose, and our choices lead to consequences, whether good or bad. God gave man the power of choice. Without choice, they can be no love. Correct, true. Question four, who is the only one to solve the problem of sin according to Christian doctrine? And it was so eloquently stated in Pastor Gordon's presentation of the Sabbath afternoon. You should all get this one. E, exactly. And last but not least, according to the Bible, what is portrayed as the greatest problem in our universe? D, sin. Correct. So <clears throat> the educator in me tells me to give you a feedback. So here we go, 51% of you got 100%, so that's awesome. 26% of you got 80%, 11, um, Richard, you could, 11% got 60, and 12% was not successful. You failed. So. <laughs> Okay, so tonight we're going to try to do, um, you know, have no failure, right? Um, as an professor, we don't like failure, right? Nevertheless, let's try with number two tonight. Let us start. Question number one. On Sunday, April 14th, 2024, Pastor Gordon entitled his presentation, The Greatest Love Letter. In presenting the biblical definition of love, he effectively states, A, true, love's, true love comes from heaven and Hollywood. B, true love is multidimensional, encompassing a wide scope of actions and attitude. C, true love and lust are often used interchangeably in our society. D, true love comes from heaven. Or E, true love does not exist. So what I need for you to do is just write number one and you circle the whatever A, B, or C, whatever you want to. Okay. Let's move along for time. Question number two. In discussing the characteristics of love, Pastor Gordon mentioned three characteristics. What are the three characteristics that he mentioned? And I need for you to list them in the order in which he mentioned them. Um, come on, let's go. No, there's no multiple choice. This is, <clears throat> I'll give you a little moment to think about this one. It must be in the order in which he stated it. Um, yeah, okay, let's move along, think about it, and um, you'll be able to write those in the order in which he mentioned them. Question number three, which of the following statement or statements best describe the biblical perspective as it relates to the power of the love letter? A, it has the power to change politics and global policy. B, it carries no emotional weight and has no potential effect on the recipient. C, it is God's word. D, it is a dated form of communication with no value today. And E, all of the above. Keep it to your answer to yourself quietly. Okay. 
Okay, I'm pressing on. Question number four. The Holy Bible was not written by a single person, but instead over a span of more than a thousand years by several God-inspired men. True or false? Last. Question five. According to the Bible, how should believer, believers respond to fear and anxiety? A, they should hide their feelings and not acknowledge them. B, they should worry and get angry. C, they should surrender their anxieties to God, trust in, in his sovereignty. Or D, they should take control of everything themselves, not trusting anyone else. Or E, none of the above. So, good best wishes. Thank you for participating. And your next quiz will be tomorrow when we will give you a breakdown. Yes? Pardon me? Number three, Richard? Number three? Number two? Um, which of the following statement or ments best describe the big biblical perspective as it relates to the power of the love letter? You have to keep the answers to yourselves. <clears throat> Pardon me? Number four? Okay. Richard, number four, please. The Holy Bible was, was not written by a single person, but instead over a span of more than a thousand years by several God-inspired men. Okay, so I hope that, um, that you'll do well. Tomorrow you'll get your um, results. And um, hoping that, you know, as, a, as an educator, I don't like 100%, so let's aim for a bell curve of around three out of five. That's what I'm aiming for tomorrow night. Have a great night. Good evening, everyone. It's time for the offering. Will it? Ushers, please come forward. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us through this day. We ask now, Lord, that you be with all those that have to give and those that do not have to give. I pray, oh God, that you bless those that do not have to give, that they'll be able to give in the next time or tomorrow, whenever, Lord. Thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for a roof over our head. Thank you for hearing and answer our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, I pray, amen. amen. The ushers will now wait upon you for your offering. Good evening again. 
It's now time for our special feature. I'm here representing the men's ministry department. And as I look out, I see some of our, our um, men of our department. I saw Brother Jennings over there, Brother Brown, I saw him somewhere, Brother Sopraya. We have a couple other people um, in our department, but all the men are part of our department. So I'm going to say a couple things, then we're going to watch a video. And after the video, we're going to be blessed by our evangelist. And of course, we're going to have our pastor, Jerome Gordon, speak to us afterwards. So in our men's ministry department, we have been meeting every Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. from February 2020. We haven't missed one day. The Lord is good. So we have been communicating. There you are, Brother Brown. I didn't see you before you were working. So we have been communicating. We've been praying and having many different topics. I'm going to give you two texts, just text verses as an example. But in the men's ministry department, we are working closely with the Ontario Conference. We are going to Camp Frenda May 3rd to May 5th, and we're bringing some of our young men. Our men need to grow. Our men need to learn. Our men need to share, all right? And also, stay tuned for the end of August. We're going to have a, a big planned weekend. So yes, it is men's ministry weekend, but for our family life leader, we will be involving the ladies on the Sunday, okay? So here's two texts, just an example. We've been reading some texts, and we are trying in terms of um, working with these texts. Here's one. It says, Ephesians 4.29, it says, let every, actually, sorry, let me start from the beginning. It says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So that's an example that we talk to the men in the morning because we want to make sure we follow that. The other text that I have is taken from James 1, verse 19, and it says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. So those are the, some of the texts that we start off early in the morning on a Tuesday. I have a video for you. It's called, A Man Fell in a Hole. And think about it, men and women. Which person would you be when you see this man that fell in the hole? So we're encouraging the men to live better and do better. So after the video, immediately we'll have our singing evangelist and our preacher. Thank you. A man fell in a hole. He fell in a hole and he couldn't get out. A traveler passed by. He told the man to meditate, to purify his mind, and when he reached Nirvana, all suffering would cease. The man did as he was told, but he remained in the hole. Another man appeared. He explained that the hole didn't exist, and neither, in fact, did the man. It was all an illusion. The man who did not exist was still stuck in the hole that was not there. Another visitor arrived. He instructed the man to perform good deeds to improve his karma, and though he would still die in the hole, he might be reincarnated as something magnificent. Another man looked down from above. He taught the man to pray five times a day facing east and to follow five important tenets. If he was faithful, one day, perhaps, the divine would set him free. The man prayed as best he could, but he was losing strength, and in the hole he remained. Another man appeared. 
there was something different about him. He called down to the man in the hole and asked him if he wanted to be free. This man lowered himself into the earth, into the pit. He took hold of the man and dragged him into the light. And the man in the hole, who could not get himself out, was saved. These eyes 
there's a scene Oh, it was in the night Through the storms of my life And that's when God proved His love Sails or torn. See, I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas, but the anchor holds in spite of the storm. As I face the raging seas, but the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Good evening, everybody. Did you have a fine day today? Was God good to anybody today? If God was good to somebody, can I see you lift your hands and say, praise the Lord? We should never be afraid to say, praise the Lord. We cannot be so um, opulent and cerebral that we are afraid to display God's praises physically. We must be a people who like to praise the Lord. I remember several years ago, we were over in New Jersey. And, you know, my wife likes to say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And um, we were in this all Caucasian church. And the folks were looking at her. And um, when the service was over, somebody walked over to her and said, sister, when you said amen, it just moved my heart. And I said to myself, why didn't she say amen herself? But we must not be afraid to acknowledge the goodness of God, because God is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And we will never be too tired or too busy to praise the Lord. I love to praise the Lord because it makes the demons tremble when we praise the Lord. When we praise him, he takes us to another level. Now, I want to um, affirm my host and hostess, brother and sister Cohen. They are, she don't want me to say that, but she's, you know, I, I ride on the wings of their non-affectatious, non-histrionic, non-duplicitous serenity in their home. They just... They are born-again Christians, sincere and open. Thank you for all them Jamaican yellow yams. See, yeah, I can jump and preach. <laughs> I want to say a special hello to those online. Now, if you, if you are online and you're enjoying the program, just type, praise the Lord. We want to welcome those online, those who are watching, and those on, on, on Zoom through the miracle of technology. In fact, somebody called me from beautiful Grenada and say a lot of us in Grenada are watching. I, the one sister said, I send the link around and folks are watching in Grenada. So for those in the island of Spice where everything is nice, we say hi and hello. And for those who are in Dominica and Jamaica, we want to borrow a colloquial phrase and say big up. Now, some of you don't know what that means, but 
Those from Jamaica. You know what that means? It means everything Irie, right? All right. Uh, now you got to help me. I don't understand the Trinidadian slangs yet, but I love Tobago. I love Trinidad. I love Dominica. There's a beautiful islands off the sea. Tonight, we are going to make a call. This is a serious message tonight, and after the message, I'm going to make a call. So I want you to begin in your hearts and minds to prepare to say yes to Jesus. The devil is real. You hear what I say? He's a wicked, real enemy. And I know he's real because we have had encounters. You know the devil likes to pick on God's people. Do you know that? But the devil is a liar and he's a loser. Somebody hear the preacher. The devil is a loser. He was defeated in heaven. He was defeated at Calvary, and he's going to be defeated again. Jesus is the winner, man. Amen. But I want you not to listen to him. I want you to decide to follow Jesus tonight as the word of God is presented. And I'm going to give you a number. I want you to write it down from now. And it is the number of my pastor. You know, my pastor name is the... Right, Honorable, and Inimitable Dr. Rohan Sewell. And if you want to send us a text message, the number is 4, I mean 647-573-2086 for those who are online, you want to call, you want to send a WhatsApp to say, I have accepted Jesus. Um, please, the number again, 647-573-2086. After the service... Send a WhatsApp to tell us if you have accepted the Lord or give the pastor a call. And he's willing to hear it. This pastor is a man of God. I have known him for many years. He's an awesome gentleman. Where is Sister Millie? She's here tonight. Oh, which means tonight you're not in all your glory. But we're happy that you're here. Let's go to the word of the living God. What is tonight's subject, everybody? I am. May I see the hands of the visitors in our midst? You're not an Adventist. You're, you're just visiting. You don't belong to this church. You raise your hand. Come on, raise them. All right. Now, Martin, thank you so much. Martin, brethren, our church is a garden, right? With chrysanthemum and hibiscus and daffodil. And our visitors, what are they? They are the roses in our midst tonight, so we are very delighted to have you. I am different now. Let's pray. And now, gracious Father, the moment has come for you to speak your word through your servant to your people. Oh, Holy Father, I am just a sinful lump of clay. Nothing good is in me. Anything good that's found in me is just because of a hill called Calvary. So now I pray that self will be crucified. And I pray that Jesus Christ will be glorified. Father, use me to lift up Jesus tonight, I pray. And when we shall have come to the end, may all of us say, indeed, it was good for us to hear, to have heard the word of the Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As humans, we often despise people because there is something annoying or disgusting about them. But we must break out of the cancer culture and recognize that people can change. Do you believe people can change? If you can change, then people can change. Amen? You might be thinking that Johnny or Jennifer or Nigel is the man that you used to know 10 years ago. And you might still see him in, in the supermarket and you pass by him uh, and you don't want to talk to him because of what happened 10 years ago. Don't be stuck in the past. Because the person you're pointing your finger uh, at because of what they've done in the past, what you don't know is that they and Jesus said to that a long time ago. And they have been changed. Amen. Now, many years ago, there was a village overseas where... There was a man who used to steal sheep. And they, he wouldn't, they caught him, they let him go. They said, if you don't stop it, we're going to brand you. And he would not stop it. And you know what they did? They branded him in his forehead with the letters ST, meaning sheep thief. And you know, he walked away from that village and he went to another 
village far away. He gave his heart to Jesus. He changed his life. And he began to live a righteous life down there. Some years passed and somebody from the former village was visiting. And saw him and saw the people buzzing around him. And, and they, they realized he was gregarious and personable and sociable and friendly and affable. And they, they said, but hold on. The, 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 the person touched one of me. I said, you don't know who that man is? I said, who are you talking about? He said, yes, yes, you all don't know him. That man is, he said, stop. Who are you talking about? He said, yes, yes, man, he's a, you don't see the writings in his forehead. You don't see the two letters in his forehead. He said, yes, we have seen it. But that man is such a good man, such a nice, honest man. We are convinced that the ST stands for saint. I am saying to you tonight that people can change. Because God is able to change everybody. And when a person has been changed, you must allow them to enjoy their new status. When Lazarus came from the, the, the grave, having been dead for four days, you know, there might have been people who wanted to, to, to talk about him, what he used to be. But Jesus said what? Lose him. Uh, there might have been a lady who used to be in prostitution, but she has been baptized and she has given her heart to Jesus. Stop talking about what she used to do. Stop tying her up with your gossip. Jesus says, lose her in the name of Jesus. Lose those who have been dead, but now they are alive. L Lazarus is a symbol of sinful humanity. The Bible says that we were dead in what? trespasses and sins, dead in trespasses and sins, which means that we were shackled by the effects of sin. But the Bible lets us know, beloved, that that's a serious condition. In fact, Jeremiah 17 and verse 9 says, the heart is what? Deceitful above some things. Is that what it says? All things and is what? Desperately wicked who can know it. The sinful heart of man is desperately wicked. It means that man's sinful heart is capable of doing some things that, would, that are just incredible. You know, man's heart is sinful, really sinful. This is accentuated in Psalm 51 and verse 5. The Bible says, Behold, I was shapen in what? Iniquity and in sin did what? My mother conceived me. I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much education you have. As I like to say, you might have more degrees than a thermometer. You might be prettier than the prettiest princess. But the Bible is true. It doesn't matter what you have or what you look like. You were born in sin. You share the juice of Adam in your vein. All of us were, were born in sin. You know, sin is a terrible thing. Sin is more than what you do. Sin is what makes you do what you do. Sin is inside of you. Sin is rebellion against God. Sin, is a, a, sin causes you to rebel against a holy God. Sin is entrenched selfishness. When sin is at work, selfishness is at work. Sin and selfishness are one and the same. Sin is the real problem in the world. So I don't care if you are Republican or Democrat, like referring to our neighbors next door, or you are NDC or NMP, referring to those back home. Doesn't matter what political party you belong to. I want to let you know that no politician has the answer for the problems of this world. Why? Because the problems of this world are the problems of sin. And I told you some nights ago that uh, that's why I don't buy where this argument when they're talking about let's have tougher gun control laws after a mass shooting. Because the truth of the matter is that guns don't kill people. It's people that kill people. And they kill one another because their hearts are full of sin. And you can only solve the problem when the nation turns back to God. Because the Bible says righteousness does what? 
exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The answer to the problems of the world are not in the legislative halls. They must be found somewhere else in a reconnection with heaven. Sin is the root and sins are the fruits. What do you mean by that, Pastor Gordon? Well, the Bible says that we were born in sin. That is a condition. And because we were born in sin, then we produce sins. What do you mean by that, Pastor Gordon? What I mean by that is that sin is the state. Sin is the state of being separated from God. Sin is man minus his maker. And it is because we are away from God that we produce the individual acts of sin. So the lying and the stealing and the adultery, these are the, these are the sins. But the sins come because of the sin which is being away from God. In other words, sin is the parent and sins are the children. I remember years ago there was a pastor in Mandeville named Pastor Howard Holmes. And pastor went to the hospital to pray for a gentleman. And he was in real trouble. He was dying and he was praying. He was saying, Lord, there is so much cobweb in my life. Lord, Lord, the cobweb, so much cobweb in my life. And pastor Holmes touched him on the shoulder and said, brother, that's not what you are to pray. You should ask God to kill the spider. Well, sin is the spider and the individual acts of, of sin are the web. So what God does in helping us is that he takes care of sin. And that's why in John 1, 29, it says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin, singular, of the world. He has to take care of sin in order to take care of sins. If you understand that, say amen out there. Sin is the, 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 the root, but the sins are the fruits. This is the fruit of sin. Anytime you are entertained by bloodshed, something is wrong. There is sin in the heart. You can't possibly be entertained by blood. I don't know. I, it, it disturbs me when people come to church. I say, did you see the fight last night? Man, the man, no. I said, but what's going on? Huh? War is a feature of sin. The devil delights in war. Because one bomb kills a lot of people. Anytime wars escalate, it is because sin in the hearts of men is escalating. And then we see some other features of sin. Like some people say, they are one person trapped in the body of another. This poor girl said that she, she's one species. She's trapped in the body of a cat. And so she tries to change. Anywhere you see this thing where... Folks are, are saying that they are one thing trapped in the body of another. And you must not be judgmental. You must not be critical. You must be prayerful. This poor gentleman said that he was a tiger trapped in the body of a human being. And he did all the surgeries and he did all the things. He eventually died of suicide. Poor fellow. I am saying all of this that we're seeing in the world is a feature of sin. This poor gentleman, he says he identifies as a dog. What is causing that? Sin. And there was this guy, a male 50. I, he said he now identifies as a 15-year-old female. And he was allowed in the girls' changing room. Beloved, I am saying to us today that sin is responsible for these things. Sin produces sexually irresponsible behavior. Long ago when I was a boy, we used to have a term. And you all don't know this term. You're too sanctified and holy. It's a, a village ram. You all don't know that term, right? You, you got to have gray hairs like me to remember that term, right? Uh, you know, uh, we, we talk about a village ram. You sanctified people don't understand those terms. These are deep Caribbean terms. A village ram is a man who... A village ram is a man who follows being a man and have enough girls, enough girls in bungalow, girls from Rima and girls from... You don't, shouldn't know it. But, you know, this is a feature of sin. Anytime you find this happening, you get in trouble. This is God's plan. God's plan for sexuality is that it should happen only in marriage between a man and his wife. Come on and say amen out there. 
And listen, I know I'm going to sound old-fashioned when I say this, but we must teach our young ladies to be virgin until they get married. And now this is going to sound even strange. And we must teach the young boys to be the same virgins until they get married. And that amen is we. Come on. Amen. amen. You can't, they must not be running about. It is still good for our young people to observe decency and virginity. It is still good in the sight of God. You know, God makes sexuality and it's a blessing. But, but, but. <laughs> Pastor Sewell, I am I am a marriage officer, and sometimes when I when I when I have the couples before me at, at the altar, and, and I, I I ask them the wedding, do you, the, the vows? Are, are you willing to take this man to be your lawful wedding your husband to live together in God's holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, cherish her, honor her, be devoted unto her until they, they, they can't wait for me to finish? Oh, I do, and that's when I give you your license. Now you are not supposed to go driving on the road until you get your driver's license. At the altar, I give you your driver's license. You can go and drive. <laughs> drive to Florida. Drive anywhere. But until then, it's illegal to drive on the road without a... Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Amen. That's God's plan. All of this is sin. And if the, what I want to tell you is that man cannot change himself. Are you there with me? He can't change himself. Education can't change you. You could be educated as you wish. Be education cannot change you. Yes, education, willpower may produce an outward correctness of behavior, but education cannot change the heart. It is said that if a man is a, is a thief and he steals the pins off the railroad track, if you give him education, he will sit behind his desk and steal the whole railroad company. Right? Because education doesn't produce righteousness, brother Cowan. Something else does that. Man cannot change himself. And by the way, the healthcare professionals cannot help when it comes down to sin. In my research, I discovered that the, the, the profession that has the highest rate of suicide are the healthcare professionals. Psychologists and doctors. That, oh, beloved. It says to us that these people are wonderful people. We love them. We must support them. But the answer for the sin problem is not in the healthcare professionals. Amen. Who is the answer? Jesus is the solution. Jo Come on, read with me. Just when everything seems hopeless, God unselfishly sacrificed his son. What does that spell? Jesus, somebody say amen out there. But let me run along. The only one who can satisfy the human heart is the one who made the human heart. Is that all right? Amen. And so one night, there was a man named Nicodemus. The same came to Jesus in the night. He was a wealthy man. The Bible says he was, he was a great man. In fact, I did a little research on him. And according to Usher and Collar, writing in the Jewish Encyclopedia in 1905, they identified Nicodemus as Ben-Gurion, mentioned in the Talmud as a wealthy man. The historians tell us that he had so much money he could feed Jerusalem for 10 years. Wealthy man! But he realized that in spite of his money, there was something missing from his heart. I tell you all the time that money is good. Money can buy you a Lamborghini, but money can't buy life. Money is good, and I always wish I have as much as Dr. Rowan Sewell. Huh? But with all the money, money is, while it is so good, money cannot satisfy the deepest longings of your heart. And so the man came to Jesus. He came as a Pharisee, which means he had religious power, a ruler of the Jews, political power. He came to Jesus. Jesus cut through all the preambulatory remarks, and Jesus said to him, Ah, oh, Rabbi, let me, he said, Rabbi, you're a teacher come from God. Because no man can do these miracles that you do except God is with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, unless a man is what? Born again, he what? Cannot see the kingdom of God. So here the Bible says that it is necessary for us to be what? Born again. Which means being born once physically will not solve the sin problem in your heart. You must be born again. Right? And Jesus continued. Jesus says, that which is born of the flesh is what? Come on. 
and that which is born of the is what? Do not marvel that I said unto you, you what? Must be born again. And for all those who are watching online and those who are here, I want to reiterate what Jesus said. For you to be saved, you must be born again. We have come to a time when nobody preaches, the, hardly anybody preaches these things anymore. We find a lot of preachers are preaching and telling you, sow a seed faith in my ministry and send me your money. And some of these preachers that are asking you for money, they have turbo Cessnas and they have golden faucets in their house and they have mansions and they're preaching because they want to get people stuff. Now I believe that when you come to church, you should bring an offering and I believe you should return the tithes but I believe that if a preacher is preaching and his emphasis is money he did not come from the Holy Spirit's calling he is on his own agenda and he needs to repent because God has called preachers not to tell people what they want to hear but to tell them what they need to hear and what every sinner needs to hear is that they must be born again must be born again. Tell me that. Today, if you have come to the end of your moral resources, if you have made a mess out of your life, if you have fallen down in a dark pit of filth and self-disgust, if you are hurt and tired and you feel like giving up, if your boyfriend has left you and your heart is broken, if you don't know where to turn, I come to tell you, you can make a choice for Jesus. And he will take you just as you are. But you must make the choice. You've got the power of what? Power of choice. And let me tell you something. No one can choose for you. Even if someone makes a suggestion, you can choose to follow it or not. Every single person on Zoom, on YouTube or here, you need to understand no one can make this choice for you. Not even your mommy can. Your parents cannot decide for Jesus for you or they may pray for you but every person must make the choice for themselves I can take you to the fountain but I cannot drink for you huh I can take you to a famous New York restaurant but I cannot eat for you you've got to make a choice for yourself I can take you to church but I cannot worship for you Every single person must be connected must make the choice for himself or herself that's very important when we think of Moses. Moses was in a place called Egypt. Where was Moses? Egypt was an opulent place. In fact, it, 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 was, it was upscale. Don't you think it was backward? The pharaohs had hot and cold water for their baths. They had what they wanted. It was, it was very sophisticated. They lived there. And young Moses... Moses, when he came, when he, when, he, when he got to a certain level of maturity, the Bible says when he come of age, Moses looked at one side and he saw the opulence and material prosperity of Egypt. He was being groomed to be a pharaoh. He attended all the universities of Egypt. According to Stephen, he was very versed in all the technology of Egypt. Moses had a choice to make. Either he was going to follow the normal thing, or he was going to stand with God's people. Thanks be to God, the Bible says. Come on, let's read it together. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called what? The son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to what? Suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what? That is to tell you that the life of sin may be sweet now, but it is only for a season. You're going to come to a time when your head is pressing a dying pillow and all the pleasures that you have had will now be empty. They cannot satisfy you when your head is pressing a dying pillow, when the doctor looks at the monitor and tells you you're going to be gone in a few days. I want to let you know the only thing that matters then is Jesus. So Moses chose, God says, let my people go. And the God told him about the blood. Tomorrow night I'll tell you about what, the, what happened in the house. But let's move on. Let's move on. Joshua came on the scene. And I like what Joshua said. Joshua was a successful leader. Joshua said to them, and if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. You must make your choice. 
And I told her that choices have consequences. Ultimately, your choice takes you to one of two destinations. You know what they are? Jeremiah, let's read Jeremiah. He says, now you shall say to this people, thus saith whom? Behold, I set before you what? And the way of what? Death. Now, I want you to know there are only two destinies. It's either what? Heaven or hell. Some modern people have PhDs. And they say, we don't believe in heaven or hell. No wonder somebody said PhD sometimes mean permanent head damage. Because some people go to universities and come back saying that they come from a monkey. You know, you could be brilliant, but if your brilliance causes you to despise the unadulterated, time-tested word of God, then something is wrong with your education. It is still true. There are only two destinies, heaven or, or hell. And listen, hell is going to be a real place. It's going to be a place of fire. And it's not Capitan fire. It's real fire. Huh? But heaven is also going to be a real place. Amen? It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to tell you how to get there and then I'll send you home. Let's go. What's your choice tonight? May I see the hands of those who want to go to heaven? Yeah, hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. I no longer say I want to go to heaven. You know what I say? I'm going to heaven. I am going to heaven. Sister Cohen, if... When you get to heaven, I won't say if you get to heaven. When you get to heaven, look for me because I'm going to be there. I'm so serious about this thing. You know what I told the Lord? I said, God, if you look down the future, and you know God sees the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. I said to God, if you look in the future and you see that I'm going to give up my faith and go chase women and do all kinds of crazy things, just put me to sleep while I'm still walking with you. I said, God, I give you permission to do that because I'm serious about my salvation. Somebody say amen out there. I don't make joke when it comes on to my Jesus. I am holding on to Jesus. I am walking with Jesus and I will walk from here right on to the hereafter. That's my choice tonight. How about you? If you're choosing Jesus tonight, put your hands together and give Jesus a praise. I'm choosing Jesus tonight. It's your choice. So let me tell you how to get there, and then I'll be done. Let's go. You want to know how to get there? Can I tell you in three steps? Three steps, and then I'm finished. Let's go. The first step is what? Repentance. All right. What's repentance, Pastor Gordon? Jesus tells us in Luke 13, 3, he says, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise what? And that is the truth. Except you repent. But what is repentance? Repentance is godly sorrow for sin. It's going in one direction and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Thank God the Holy Spirit is still speaking to the hearts of men and women. You're online tonight. You're on Zoom tonight. You're in church tonight. Because the Holy Spirit is working on your heart. And as the Spirit speaks to you, as he, as he encourages you, I encourage you to say yes to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will make you hate the things that you used to love. It's godly sorrow for sin. Huh? And Isaiah says, come now, let us reason how. Together, saith the Lord, thou your sins be as what? They shall be what? Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as what? Several years ago, I had a crusade in a place called Lapland, way up in a, you ever heard, you, you might never heard of Catadupa, but some of you pastors, will you know them here, way up there. And listen, man, I had on a red tie and a white shirt while I was doing Bible work, and I said to an elderly gentleman, look at me. I said, though your sins be like my red tie, they can be like my white shirt. He said, thank you, brother God. He gave his life to Jesus and died with a smile on his face. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. But notice he says, come now. Let me underline that in red for you. Come when? Now. Come now and let us reason together. God is a reasonable person. 
you might have some challenges. You might have some, some little concerns. Lord, what am I going to do if I give my life to Jesus? How am I going to fit in with my friends? God says, come, let's talk about it. Come, let's reason together. And God will show you how to fix your problems. I want to let you know that my God is a problem solver. He's a burden bearer. He's a body healer. And he's a stain remover. Come now. Let's reason together. At Pentecost, when Peter preached, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, what? Repent and be baptized. So repentance is the first prerequisite. Is as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, as God puts that in you, you decided that you make a decision. You decide, I am going to leave the world of sin and I'm going to follow Jesus. And the Bible says, be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So repentance is a change of direction. And I'm so happy that Jesus is able to perform that in you. He can change your direction. And you turn around. And while, whereas you were on your way to hell, after you have repented, you change. You're in a new direction now. On a new direction, you're on your way to heaven. And let me move on. Second step is what? Confession. What is it? Confession. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, come on, read it with me. It says, he who covers his sin shall not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have what? Mercy. Now, interesting, God says, if you cover your sins, you shall not prosper. Don't cover them. Tell Jesus about them. And don't confess them to a man. You don't come and confess your sins to me or to Dr. Cyril. We can't take away your sin. Am I right? We can't take away sin. The, listen, your sin is not my business, right? The Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. And it is not Pastor God and the pastor. It's not the bishop, the prelate, anybody. The one mediator between God and man, his name is Jesus. So you get on your knees. And the thing I love about Jesus is when you talk to him, he doesn't put your business in the street. You know, if you tell your business to some people, it will be all over Facebook. But I want to let you know that when you talk to Jesus, he takes your deepest secrets. He washes you from your sins. Jesus is the best person to tell your secrets to. You confess your sins to him. And by the way, you must tell him exactly who you are. If you're a liar, tell him you're a liar. If you're an adulterer, tell him you're an adulterer. You're not telling him to inform him. Why? If anybody knows about it, Jesus does. He knows everything. He knows the secret things. He knows all the websites that you have visited. He knows if you love porn. He knows why if you gossip. Jesus knows everything. So you're not confessing to inform him. You are confessing like an apology. You're saying, Lord, I know that you know I'm a sinner. But I come to you because you are the sinner's friend. Amen. Now 1 John 1 verse 9 says... If we confess our sins, what happened? He is faithful and just to what? Forgive us and to cleanse us from some unrighteousness. Is that what it says? But to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Jesus can change you from all your unrighteousness. That's what the Bible says, and I believe it. He forgives and he cleanses. And he says that he will take all your sins and cast them in the depths of the sea. And one preacher said, he puts up a sign that says, no fishing here. You know, people are always trying to go fish about, oh, why she used to do that, whatever. The Bible says he cast all the sins in the depths of the sea. And the last of the three is conversion. What did I say? Repentance, confession, that's conversion. Let's hear what the Bible says. Come on. Therefore, if any man, and when it says any man, it means any man. Black man, white man, rich man, poor man, tall man, short man, handsome man, and something else. Any man, 
in Christ. He's a new creature. All things are what? Pass away and behold, all things are become new. Thanks be to God, we can be changed. Huh? The Bible says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he what? Power to become what? Sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Notice he gave them power. Our authority from the Greek exousia. He gave you power to become the son of God. Oh, beloved, let me run along. The change, stay with me now. I'm going to land this plane shortly. But I got to tell you two other things and then I, I, I land the plane. Is that all right? Now listen, the change on the inside must be reflected on the outside. Come on and say amen out there. If you are changed, then people must see it. You can't be a Christian. I did that. Um, you can't be a Christian and we can't see it. Listen, when you're a Christian, we must be able to see it. You know, there are some folks, they come to church. And I told you some time ago that sitting in a garage doesn't make you an automobile. Sitting in church doesn't make you a Christian. There are some folks that come to church and they look like they're all so good. But you bounce their car in the parking lot and you see something else. I want to let you know that the change on the inside must be seen on the outside. So when the Holy Ghost has changed you, young man, you can't be walking like this with your pants dragging off your bottom. When the Holy Ghost has changed you, you must pull up the pants. Put a belt. Somebody talk to me out there. And young ladies, when the Holy Ghost has changed you, you can't be wearing stuff, advertising breast, legs, and ties like you work at KFC. You've, you've got to dress differently. Somebody say, say amen out there. When the change has happened on the inside, it must be shown on the outside. Now, I am a country boy, and I have some standards at my church. In my church, we say that, this you can't sit on the platform unless you, you have, you're properly covered. Because when you're not properly covered and you're tugging and tugging, it can't get any longer by the tugging. Huh? It's already short. And if it's too short and you're up there, those down there will see from here to eternity. We don't want that on the platform. Somebody say Amen. I remember once I, had, I was in a place called Coleyville in Manchester. Anybody know that place? Yeah, man, I was in Coleyville. And we made, this, we made this, 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 this rule. We said, look here, we, we accept anybody. But please, God is a holy God. If you're coming up here, look like you're coming up here. Somebody say amen out there. So we had a funeral. And the casket was before the church. And uh, the lady, one young lady, she was to read a scripture. But when I saw her getting ready to come up and I look at her, boy, she looked like she worked for KFC. <laughs> you know, what do I mean by that? Advertising. You said it. So I touched the elder and I said, elder, please tell her that we have a platform protocol and you can't come up here like that. The elder was a little timid. I said, elder, okay, tell him, tell her to meet the pastor in the vestry. So I slipped off the platform and I went to the vestry. And she came to the vestry and I said, my dear sister, I understand that it's your, your daddy who is lying there. Please accept my sincerest commiseration. <laughs> but you know, my dear, we have a platform protocol. You can't go up there like that. You know what she did? She said, I understand, Pastor. She said, hold on. She went to the car and got the jacket. It was a jacket suit. She came back and she buttoned up. She looked so nice. Come on and say amen out there. If you are changed on the inside, it must be shown on the outside. Come on and say amen out there. You can't call yourself a Christian and you are the most cantankerous person in the church. When Jesus is in your heart, there must be a sweetness in your disposition. Somebody say amen out there. Hi. There must be a sweetness in your disposition. I want to let you know as I close, beloved, that Jesus is able to perform that in you. He says, you must come to him. And he says, when you come to him, he will never cast you out. He can change you so that you can say, 
I'm a different person now. But as my song, my evangelist is getting ready to sing, I got to tell you this. It touched my heart. What I'm about to tell you now really touched my heart. Several years ago, I pastored in a beautiful parish called St. Mary. Anybody here know St. Mary? Let me run down to St. Mary. Welcome to St. Mary. I was pastoring in St. Mary. And my elder and I, we were out on the field visiting the members. You know, in the Caribbean, we say the pastor must know where the members live. I mean, I know in, um, in North America, Doc, it's sophisticated and everybody's, you know. But, but down in, I'm going to tell you, I'm a country boy. Down there, we, we, know we, we try to know where the members live. So my elder and I, we were visiting members and none of their members. And we saw this guy. This guy came to me. He said, Pastor Gordon, Pastor Gordon, man, yeah, yeah, give me a bones, give me a bones. Yes, Pastor Gordon. And he said, Pastor Gordon, I wanted to see you a long time. I said, why? He said, Pastor Boy, let me tell you something. I heard that you were going to baptize my brother. And Pastor, I told everybody, it's a lie. Because, Pastor, you didn't know my brother. So, Pastor, my brother was a done man. Was a wicked man. You're too holy to know those terms. Was a done man. Was a wicked man. Said, Pastor, my brother was a shatter. You all don't know that. Said, Pastor, my brother was a wicked man. Terrible man. Gambler. Pastor, the man wicked. This is my brother. I know Pastor, but a wicked. And, Pastor, when I heard that he was going to be baptized... I said, it's a lie. My brother can't change. He said to me, Pastor Gordon, I did not believe it. And I heard he gave his heart to God. This wicked man, Pastor, I heard he gave his heart to Jesus. And Pastor, I heard the baptism was going to be at the Lewis Store Church. I said, Pastor, I came. And you couldn't see me because, you know, man, not a church man, you know, Pastor. So I was at the window. Because I had to come. I didn't believe it. I had to come to see for myself. So, Pastor, when I saw him stand up and he, and he took his vows, and the Pastor, I saw you lower him down in the baptismal pool. And I saw the man who I thought was a wicked man. I saw him come up with a smile on his face. I said, Oh boy. This thing, this thing is real. And that's why I said I had to see the pastor who changed my brother. And I said to him, you only make one mistake. There is no pastor alive that could change your brother. I said the one who changed him, his name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. And he can save from the guttermost to the uttermost. I say his name is Jesus. He has changed hundreds and thousands before. And he's still in the saving business. And I say, my dear brother, the Holy Ghost came down upon me as I talked to him. I said, my dear brother, he has changed many. He has changed your brother and he can change you. He said, yes, pastor. Yeah, the thing in Jamaica is a pastor. I go so. Yeah, yeah. He said, "Yes, pastor." And you know what he said to me? He said, "Pastor, but I am not ready for them thing yet." I left. I was doing. I was studying at N, at at, U, at NCU. Pastor Cyril and I we were in the same master's degree program. I was. I went up to Mandeville. I got a call from my first elder. Elder Lorenzo McNaught, he called me, he said, Pastor, Pastor, I said, yes. He said, Pastor, you need to come down to St. Mary. I said, what's going on? He said, Pastor, you remember that man that you saw who talked about his brother who had gotten baptized? I said, yes. 
said, Pastor, he's very sick. You know what? He was a girl's man. And he contracted HIV. His resistance went down. The CD4 count was low. The viral load was high. His body was devastated as the, as the virus multiplied in his system. He was on his bed. The sores were multiplying now. Pastor, he said he wants you to come now. He said, Pastor, come. I said to the elder, elder, I will come. And as I stand here before you, I got all my preparations together to go to St. Mary to baptize the man. He said, Pastor, I want to be baptized now. Tell the pastor I'm ready. AIDS was in his body. As I was getting ready that morning, after I got news, I got ready. Next day I was going. My cell phone rang. It was the elder. He said, Pastor, he died. I said, he died. He could have been changed. He could have been saved. He lingered. He lingered for too long. Tonight. 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 This night. is your chance. I invite the church to stand with me. It's your chance. Remember I told you in the sermon that no one can choose for you. I told you in the sermon that no one can choose for you. I believe there is somebody here tonight who is choosing for Jesus. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Let the angels take a record. Just raise your hand. Somebody here is choosing Jesus. Just raise your hand. Say, Lord, I raise my hand. Say, I don't want to be like that young man. Raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Think about it. I did not reach him on time. But you are here. You are here. You're online. You're on Zoom. You can text us a message. Indicate to us your decision for Jesus. Would you raise your hand if you're in the sanctuary? We want to pray for you. God bless you. I see a hand over there. Somebody else needs to raise their hand. Raise it. Don't be afraid. Just raise it. Say, Jesus. Pray in your heart, members. Pray for somebody. Say, Jesus, I want to make it. Raise your hand. As the Spirit of the Lord speaks to you, just raise your hand for Jesus. Is there another? Another will raise their hand. The Spirit of the Lord is knocking at your doors right now. If you feel something tugging, it's not the pastor, it's the Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus says tonight is your night. I see your hand, my little child. God bless you. Somebody else, you want to take a hold of his hand tonight? It's a serious moment. If you're online, remember the number is 647-573-2086. Text your decision to the pastor. If you see somebody struggling, 
Just help them say a word. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Is there one other person? In the light of his Pastor, glory. come and pray for us. Even as Pastor comes to pray. Even as Pastor comes to pray. Will grow strangely in the light of his glory and praise. Amen, amen, amen. We give God thanks for the the word. And the Spirit is now doing its job. We saw the Spirit working today. We saw the Spirit working today. We'll talk about baptism this coming Sabbath, Pastor. And by the time we took the card out, the person went for his card. His card was signed already. Signed already. Um, you, you don't have to stay in your sin. The only good thing about sin... It is transferable. If you have it, you can give it to Jesus. Amen. Pastor, could you pray for us? Let us pray. Mighty God and our Father, what a powerful message tonight. One that hits every single one of us in this room here this evening. And we thank you for the opportunity that you have given to each one of us. The chance to make another decision for you. What a great God you are. What a wonderful God you are. We thank you for the message, and we thank you for the messenger. We ask God that you will continue to hide him in the cloud of the Holy Spirit. And Father, should there be one person here who knows that they should have raised their hands but felt timid, I ask God that they will experience your love in a brand new way. And that they will say, I too must give my heart to Jesus Christ. I too must step forward because as I step forward, you will confess their name before the Father. So we thank you. We praise you for decisions that have been made tonight. Bless, I pray. Keep, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for coming. Please remain standing. We're going to sing our theme song in a second. Christ for the crisis. What did we learn tonight? We talked about I am different now. We know Jesus is the solution. And the three things, the first was repentance. The second was what? Conversion. Confession. And the last is conversion. Thank you. So uh, remember, after our theme song, we have a light, light snack for you outside. Tess, okay. We're going to sing our theme song, Learning to Lean. Learning to lean.
thank you very much for coming. Remember, we have some uh, refreshment on my right. And tomorrow, I would like us to have a special prayer feature. I want to pray for healing because God is still in the healing business. Pray for health. Pray for loved ones or children. So if you believe in the power of prayer, come tomorrow. Let us pray. Let us pray for victory. Good night. The peace of the Lord be with you. Shalom.